Lord, open thou our lips. And to save us. Psalm 136, 137, and 138.
The first lesson is written in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verses 13 to 32, and it forms part of an exhortation put into the mouth of Moses. The covenant offers God's people the promise of rich rewards for loyalty to God, but also sets before them the perils of disobedience. If you pay heed to the commandments which I give you this day, and love the Lord your God, and serve him with all your heart and soul, then I will send rain for your land in season, both autumn and spring rains, and you will gather your corn and new wine and oil, and I will provide pasture in the fields for your cattle. You shall eat your fill. Take good care not to be led astray in your hearts, nor to turn aside and serve other gods and prostrate yourselves to them. Or the Lord will become angry with you. He will shut up the skies and there will be no rain. Your ground will not yield its harvest and you will soon vanish from the rich land which the Lord is giving you. You shall take these words of mine to heart and keep them in mind. You shall bind them as a sign on the hand and wear them as a phylactery on the forehead. Teach them to your children. Speak of them indoors and out of doors, when you lie down and when you rise. Write them up on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. Then you will live long, you and your children, in the land which the Lord swore to your forefathers to give you for as long as the heavens are above the earth. If you diligently keep all these commandments that I now charge you to observe, by loving the Lord your God, by conforming to his ways and by holding fast to him, the Lord will drive out all these nations before you, and you shall occupy the territory of nations greater and more powerful than you. Every place where you set the soles of your feet shall be yours. Your borders shall run from the wilderness to the Lebanon and from the river, the river Euphrates, to the western sea. No man will be able to withstand you. The Lord your God will put the fear and dread of you upon the whole land on which you set foot as he promised you. Understand that this day I offer you the choice of a blessing and a curse. The blessing will come if you listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, which I give you this day, and the curse if you do not listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way that I command you this day and follow other gods whom you do not know. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you are entering to occupy, there on Mount Gerizim you shall pronounce the blessing, and on Mount Ebal the curse. These mountains are on the other side of the Jordan, close to Gilgal, beside the Terebinth of Moreh, beyond the road to the west, which lies in the territory of the Canaanites of the Arabah. You are about to cross the Jordan to enter and occupy the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall occupy it and settle in it, and you shall be careful to observe all the statutes and laws which I set before you this day. Here ends the first lesson. The office hymn, The Lamb's High Banquet Called to Share,
second lesson is written in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verses 1 to 18. Peter has admitted Cornelius, a heathen soldier, to membership in the church. Here he defends this action against those who would have offered the gospel only to the Jews. News came to the apostles and members of the church in Judea that Gentiles too had accepted the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those who were of Jewish birth raised the question with him. You have been visiting men who are uncircumcised, they said, and sitting at table with them. And Peter began by laying before them the facts as they had happened. I was in the city of Joppa, he said at prayer, and while in a trance I had a vision. A thing was coming down that looked like a great sheet of sailcloth, slung by the four corners and lowered from the sky till it reached me. I looked intently to make out what was in the sheet, and I saw four-footed creatures of the earth, wild beasts, and things that crawl or fly. And then I heard a voice saying to me, Up, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, No, Lord, no, nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. And a voice from heaven answered a second time, It is not for you to call profane what God counts clean. And this happened three times. And then they were all drawn up again into the sky. And at that moment, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where I was staying, and the Spirit told me to go with them. My six companions here came with me, and we went into the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house who said, Send to Joppa for Simon, also called Peter. He will speak words that will bring salvation to you and to all your household. Hardly had I begun speaking when the Holy Spirit came upon them just as upon us at the beginning. And then I recalled what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. God gave them no less a gift than he gave to us when we put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then how could I possibly stand in God's way? And when they heard this, their doubts were silenced. And they gave praise to God and said, This means that God has granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles also. Here ends the second lesson.
I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into hell. But the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the great and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Catholic Church, and the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O oh Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O oh Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endure thy ministers with righteousness. And in our time, O Lord. given thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an ensample of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefit and also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit Ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Anthem, My Beloved Spake, by Patrick Hadley.
Let us pray. Let us pray for Her Majesty the Queen and all in authority under her and for the royal family. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth the Queen Mother, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Charles, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family, endue them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray this day for the Diocese of Matabeleland in South Africa, for Mark Wood, the Bishop, and in this Diocese of Lincoln, for Kenneth, our Bishop, for General Bishop of Grimsby, and for the Parish of Trustorp. And in our cycle of prayer from this fishing port of Grimsby, we pray this week for the skipper and crew of the trawler Ross Kandahar, now fishing off Iceland. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. song was broadcast from St. James's Parish Church, Grimsby, where the choir was directed by Robert Walker. The assistant organist was Anthony Midwood.